Hello everyone and welcome to Shell Point Today for Thursday, July 7th. I'm Mary Kay Grimaldi. And I'm Rich Nation. Coming up on today's show, Director of Resident Life, Laura Slack, talks to us about the Summer Concert Series. And Jeff Corey of the Legacy Foundation brings a guest attorney by the studio to talk about estate planning. But first, we want to take a second to remind you about the summer dining schedule here at Shell Point. The Promenade Cafe at the Woodlands Commons is now closed through September 6th. The Crystal Room on the island will close on August 15th and reopen September 4th. It will also be open for Sunday brunch on August 21st and the 28th from 10.30 a.m. until 2 p.m. And finally, the Palm Grill at the Woodlands Commons will be closed from September 13th through October 4th. Also, looking ahead to this weekend, you want to come out for the Saturday DVD. The 2016 film, The Finest Hour, is based on the most daring rescue mission in U.S. Coast Guard history. In 1952, a massive storm split the SS Pendleton in two, trapping more than 30 sailors inside the tanker's stern. Watch what happens when a four-man crew aboard a lifeboat face impossible odds to try and save the crew. The film can be seen at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands. Again, that's this Saturday. Jeff Corey of the Legacy Foundation visits today with local estate planning attorney Craig Hurst to talk about what it means to you as a Florida resident and what you might need to know about your estate planning documents. Are there unintended consequences or things you need to be aware of? Let's find out from the experts now. Hi, I'm Jeff Corey from the Legacy Foundation here at Shell Point, and today we're joined by Craig Hirsch from the Shepherd Law Firm. Craig, thank you for being here with us today. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Um, Craig, you've been a state planner here in town for a number of years and uh, served our residents quite admir admirably, and today we want to talk a little bit about uh, what it means to be a Florida resident in your estate plan. So can you tell our residents, if you're a new resident to, to Fort Myers, uh, to Florida, mm -hmm. are there certain things that you need to be aware of as, as regarding your estate planning documents? Yeah, that, that's a good question, Jeff. Thanks. Um, primarily, a lot of people think that when they move to Florida, their wills aren't valid anymore. Well, they are. You know, if you signed a valid will in Pennsylvania or Ohio or Michigan or somewhere like that, it's still valid. It's just a matter of, does, will it have unintended consequences because you're a Florida resident? So it's always a good idea to have your Florida documents updated, or your, your out-of-state documents updated. Okay, and I assume that you would say that they should go to an estate planning attorney, someone who's familiar and this is what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. What kind of things yeah. does an estate planner uh, do for a resident? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm biased, of course, because I'm board certified in wills, trusts, and estates, but... but uh, yeah, there is a difference. When, when, you, when you get right down to it, somebody who does this every day for a living as opposed to somebody who might do a little bankruptcy, a little divorce, a little this, a little of that. Uh, what we do in, in my firm is we ask them to fill out a little organizer so we have an idea, you know, what they have and, and, and how it's owned. That gives us an idea of, as to what kind of documents they should have. And then we have a goals conversation with them. We'll hmm. ask them, uh, what are you trying to accomplish here? And, and you know, we read their current documents. Oftentimes, it's surprising. The current documents don't really do what they're, they think they do. Really? Huh. So one of the important documents that every resident should have is a power of attorney, a durable power of attorney? Yeah, power of attorney is very, you, very important. Can you tell us a little bit about what a power of attorney does? Right. A lot of people think a power of attorney acts when you die, and it doesn't. A, power, a durable power of attorney is durable, meaning it's durable during your incapacity. So if I became incapacitated, if I couldn't write my checks, pay my bills, if I couldn't manage my investments, whoever I gave a durable power of attorney could do those things for me. Hmm. And then there's some health care advance directives that go along with that. Here in Florida, we have a designation of health care surrogate, a living will. Yes. And yes. a HIPAA release form. Right, right. Um, you know, the, the health care surrogate, of course, is if I can't make a health care decision for myself, who, who do I want to make it for me? And usually I have... I probably might have my spouse, you know, but if my spouse hmm. isn't around, I might have one of my children, one of my adult children. Usually you have an alternate or two. Hmm. Uh, living will is a little different. That's a document where if I'm uh, on all the hospital machines, I'm on the heart machine, I'm on the lung machine, I have no brain activity, and my direction would be I don't want to, uh, you know, live like a vegetable the rest of my life. You know, it, it, it's a direction of, of when to discontinue those artificial life-prolonging procedures. and. Hmm. And it's very important when you're selecting people to serve in roles for you if your need 
need a power of attorney or someone to make health care decisions for you. How do you advise people when it comes to who should be given authority to help them? You know, that, that's a great question. You know, sometimes when, uh, when I ask my clients that, they'll say, well, I'm going to give Jimmy my power of attorney. I say, well, tell me about Jimmy. Well, he's, he's my oldest son, and he'd be offended if I didn't give it to him. And I said, well, tell me more about Jimmy. Well, Jimmy's been through three bankruptcies and five bad relationships and so forth. And I say, you know, you shouldn't pick somebody just because they're the oldest child and they might, you know, be offended. Uh, you, you want somebody who's going to be responsible. Hmm. You want somebody who's going to be responsive to your advisors, to your lawyer, to your accountant, to your financial advisor. Uh, you know, they don't necessarily have to live in Florida. They can hmm. live up north somewhere. But so long as they're responsive, you know, with email communication and cell phones right. and whatnot, it doesn't really matter where they are, just that they're responsive. Hmm. Are there some serious mistakes or pitfalls that you see people make all the time? I mean, I see some people that want to make their own legal documents on the Internet. <laughs> I mean, I think that's probably something that we would probably tell people, advise them not to do. Yeah, you know, um, do you remember those old Fram oil filter commercials from the 1970s? Yeah. There's a guy that used to say, pay me now or pay me later. Right. And, you know, if you don't change your oil filter, you're going to do a whole new uh, cylinder job or something. It's kind of the same thing with, hmm. with wills and trusts. If you try to do it on your own, if you have a really simple estate, and a lot of people think they have simple and they really hmm. don't. But if you, know, you have a you know, few dollars to your name and you have a real simple estate, maybe an online would work for you. But for most people, especially people here at Shell Point, right. you know, they have the means to live at Shell Point. Um, they, they should invest in, in good legal documents. I agree. Um, as far as Florida, are there any special statues, taxes, anything as far as the state of Florida specifically that you, you know, jumps out at you when you advise clients? Yeah, well the, well, the good news about Florida, of course, is that we have no taxes. We don't have a state income tax. We don't have an estate tax. We don't have an inheritance tax. We don't have intangible tax. Hmm. Those are all good things. Um, you know, uh, most of your residents don't own a Florida homestead, although they homestead their, their unit here, but they don't own a homestead. So that doesn't fall into play. But if you do own a Florida homestead, that's a big uh, uh, thing that, that a lot of people miss. Uh, as far as uh, benefits, you know, one of, the, one of the chief problems is not necessarily becoming a Florida resident, it's escaping your former state's oh, tax yeah. authority. Mm -hmm. So let's say I live in Pennsylvania, but I'm there, you know, 250 days a year, and I'm only here 110 days a year. Well, even though you call yourself a Florida resident, Pennsylvania may still bring right. you in for tax purposes. So that's one of the things we look at with our with our clients. I remember you telling me the story about the fishing license. Yeah. <laughs> you want to hear Someone, about that yeah. one here? Yeah. Okay, so we had a, this was many, many years ago now, uh, we had a, a client who was a Minnesota former resident, and he owned a cabin up on a lake in Minnesota, and he, he went up there to fish every summer. Well, when he uh, went to get his fishing license for the for the summer, there is a box, and you check in-state resident or out-of-state resident. And the, I think the in-state resident was about $15 cheaper, something like that. Mm. So he checks in-state resident, and, and I think he did that because he thought that he owned this Minnesota cabin, you know. So he dies, and we are administering his estate, and, and guess who makes a claim? The Minnesota Department of Revenue, the taxing mm. authority there, made an estate tax claim. And we said, oh, no, 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 this guy, you know, Florida driver's license, Florida voting registration, Florida everything. Uh, but off our fax machine, this day's the fax machine, rolls this, um, you know, this, this claim. And there, there it was, a copy of the fishing license. He had checked <laughs> in-state resident and had signed his name. Wow. We eventually settled that case. Uh, they didn't get everything they were asking for, but they got a, they got a whole lot more than $15, wow. which was the difference between the two. Wow two fishing licenses, yeah. Well, there's, it's, uh, that's why we get legal counsel and make sure yeah. we avoid those pitfalls. So, yeah. um, Craig, we appreciate your being with us today. And well, thank, thank you, you for Jeff. the fine work you've done for our residents through the years. Um, so, anyways, thank you for joining us today. And we thank Craig Hirsch from the Shepherd Law Firm for being uh, with us. If you would like to speak with Craig or someone at the firm, uh, feel free to reach out to them or stop by the Legacy Office or call us, and we'd be happy to put you in touch with them. Thanks again. The Summer Concert Series brings another entertaining event next week with ragtime pianist Ethan Uslin. For more information, let's go to the Director of Resident Life, Laura Slack. Hello, my name is Laura Slack and I'm the new Director of Resident Life and I'm here to tell you all about our new exciting lineup for the Summer Concert Series. 
This is our sixth season and I'm so proud that Shell Point offers a summer series for all of you that make Florida your year-round home. All summer concerts are held in the Village Church and they start at 7.30 p.m. Individual ticket prices are $20. We will also have a bonus concert this summer and the price for the bonus concert is $25. The second concert of the summer features Ethan Uslin on Thursday, July 14th. He is a ragtime jazz and silent film pianist that is sure to be a great time for all who attend. The third concert of the season is the Gulf Coast Trio on Thursday, September 15th. This ensemble is well known throughout our area for presenting an appealing and diversified repertoire from the chamber masterworks of Mozart to music on the lighter side. But we've added a bonus concert on Thursday, August 25th. The Southwest Florida Symphony Chamber Orchestra will play light and popular classical pieces for your enjoyment conducted by Maestro Nier Cabaretti. I hope you will take the opportunity to enjoy one or more of the concerts we have scheduled for you this summer. In the near future, watch for some of your Shell Point neighbors appearing right here on Shell Point today. As members of the Friends of the Arts, they will be going into further detail about each concert in the summer series. To purchase tickets, stop by or call the service desk on the island or at the Woodlands Commons. There is also a form located on the back of the Summer Concert Series brochure that was sent out to all Shell Point residents in May. You can also purchase your tickets online at www.shellpoint.net. Be sure to tell all your family and friends as Shell Point Concert Series is open to the public. We look forward to seeing you at Shell Point's Summer Concert Series. Thank you for supporting the arts. You can also support the arts by becoming a friend of the arts. Please send your donation to me at the Woodlands and I will process it for you. Thank you and see you at the Summer Concert Series. And now it's time to cover all of today's happenings, Academy news, menus, and Village Church connections. Well, hello there and happy Thursday. This is the happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Caitlin Vanskoy and I'm here to give you all of today's activities. We start bright and early at 7.15 with the Health Connections class entitled Bend, Breathe, and Balance. That's in the Health Club. 8 o'clock is the time for the Men's Golf Association to be meeting at the Shell Point Golf Club. Also at 8, pickleball will be played at the game courts. And round robin tennis will be going on at the Woodlands at 8 o'clock. The Paddlers Club will be going out at 8.30 from the kayak storage for their weekly outing. And then we move to 9.15 for shuffleboard at the shuffleboard courts. Current events will be discussed in the Woodlands game room at 9.30. And also at 9.30, ladies match play tennis will be going on at the Woodlands. We move to 9.45 for introduction to beginning line dancing. That'll be held in the tarpon room. 10.15 is a time for basic line dancing in the tarpon room. And at 11 o'clock, the Suzy Q heads out to Rum Runners for lunch. You do need to sign up for that trip. Mahjong will be played in the library lounge at 1245. And there's a special event at 1 o'clock entitled Explore Your Inner Painter. That's in the Sable Room and you do need to sign up for that. Samba the Card Game will be played at 115 in the Resident Activity Center. And Fun and Fitness will be happening at 145 in the Community Room of King's Ground. 2 o'clock is the time for the Stamp Ministry. They'll be gathering in the Stamp Room. And Osteo Break Free will be happening at 2.45 in the Tarpon Room. Our seamstress will be here at 4 o'clock for her weekly service in the Osprey Room. At 4.30, the Alcoholics Anonymous meeting will be going on at the Sable Room. And Pinaco will be played at 6.30 in the Library Lounge. Our last Thursday activity is Trailblazers Bible Study at 7 o'clock in the Game Room of the Woodlands. Well, thanks so much for joining me today. I'll see you right back here tomorrow. Hello, I'm Terry Kolath with your Academy information for Thursday, the 7th of July. At 9.30, coloring for adults will take place in the Sable Room of the Woodlands for those who signed up. And tomorrow, we have another Apple iPad, iPhone, Mac free walk-in clinic where you just bring your question, your own device, and a knowledgeable, generous resident is there to assist you. Menus for Thursday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is mushroom stuffed chicken breast with quinoa pilaf and a vegetable medley. The dinner special is the crystal carving board for $15.95. The soup of the day is beef rice.
In the Island Cafe, the sandwich special is a BLT on white or wheat with a cup of soup for seven seventy five. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill are New York Strip with grilled sweet peppers for nineteen ninety five, or veal parmigiana for fifteen ninety five. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. I'm Nita from the Village Church Library. We have some great new books for your summer reading. The weather has been extremely hot and the dog days aren't even here yet. What can be better than a new book, your favorite chair, and being surrounded by air conditioning? Fiction, of course, are our most borrowed books. We have several new series, The Aloha Reef, series by Colleen Campbell. This four book set has mystery and intrigue. Plus you can't help but learn something fascinating about Hawaiian culture. A little old, older series I just discovered is Heroes of Quantico by Irene Hannon. This three book set will have you glued to the pages as the FBI characters solve their cases. The First Hostage by Jill Rosenberg is guaranteed to make you lose sleep. How does he do that? A new author to me is Chuck Holton. His series is Task Force Valor. Highly recommended by a friend, military suspense, radical Islam, unexpected love, and the grace of God all collide in his first book titled All is Fire. I can't wait to read this one. And yes, if you aren't into my kind of book, we have many other genres, including romance, historical, and humorous fiction novels as well. Are you into biographies? Many, many bios grace our shelves from those about missionaries to well-known figures. One of our newest acquisitions is The Greatest Lesson I've Ever Learned, edited by Bill Bright. It details lessons by Billy Graham, James Dobson, C. Everett Koop, and 36 others. We also have many informative books, such as The Day of Islam, the Rise of Isis, Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus, and Jews for Jesus. In addition to all the categories I've named, we have a substantial nonfiction collection, including Bible commentaries and standalone books by well known authors. Some of our newer nonfiction have tantalizing titles. For instance, Thank God for Atheists by Timothy Morgan, The Politically Incorrect Jesus by Joe Battaglia. Hallowed Be Thy Names by David Wilkerson and The Three Heavens by John Hagee. Don't these sound interesting? Add about 350 DVs, again, in fiction, nonfiction, bios, and CDs for easy listening while taking that summer road trip, and an extensive reference collection, and you have our Village Church Library. Certainly we have something that would interest you. And remember... You don't have to belong to the church or even be a Shell Point resident to borrow our books. Our hours are 9 to 11 and 1 to 3, Monday through Saturday, 8.30 to 10.15 and 4 to 6 on Sunday, with an additional time on Wednesdays, 5 to 7. What could be easier? See you this summer. Thanks for joining us for today's show. Join us again tomorrow when Terry Kolath will speak with the Legacy Foundation about their upcoming seminar, and we'll bring you the top stories from this week. Until then, this has been Shell Point Today for Thursday, July the 7th. I'm Rich Nation. And I'm Mary Kay Grimaldi. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and we look forward to seeing you back here again tomorrow.